everyone, welcome into One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. We have our first big release of 2023 dropping tomorrow. It is 2022 Top's Finest. Top's Finest, known for being the first set ever to release the refractor to the hobby. It changed the hobby. But how good is the 2022 set? What are the key cards we're going to be chasing? Who are the best break teams we should be looking into? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Tops Finest Set Guide and Review. So we do have our first big set of 2023. It's 2022 Tops Finest. And what we're trying to do in this set guide and review is find out how good the set really is. We do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. It's the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. Here's all the things that we'll cover off on. We'll start with the set highlights, dive into the different buying formats, tell you what the key cards are, tell you all about the different parallels, inserts, and autos that you can chase. And I'm even going to give you six teams that I think you should target in breaks. And if you want to know how good all 30 teams are, well, I have a break cheat sheet for you too. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating where we find out how good 2022 Tops Finest really is. Then we'll wrap it all up and tell you how it stacks up with every other set that has been released in the 2022 card collecting season. So I've got one more thing before we begin. Be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me. It's a great way to support the channel. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button so you can see all the set releases when they drop and be sure to hit the bell notification if you want to see them first. Finally, check out my Patreon page. That's where you get into my breaks. That's where you get Discord community access, break credits, no charge PSA submissions, so much more. I invite you to check it out. There is a link in the video description below. So 2022 Tops Finest. The first thing you need to know, it is the original refractor set and it's returning for its 30th year. It started way back in 1993 and has gone all the way through to 2022. Finest was the set that introduced the hobby back to the refractor way back in 1993. That's what it's still known for today. In this year's set, we have a 120 card base set checklist. And just know that cards 101 through 125 are high number short prints. The base set features rookies and veteran major league stars, but you can find some retired stars in the inserts and auto sets. What you're not going to find prospects. It is only available in hobby format and the card design sticking true to past years. It's a very modern design with abstract art in the background and it's all on chromium stock. Each hobby box is going to contain two mini boxes and each of those boxes will have one auto a piece for a total of two autos per hobby box. This year, there's an 18 color base set parallel rainbow. There's two new colors for 2022, the green lava and the red black vapor. And the high number short prints have a much smaller parallel rainbow. There's only three colors in that set. We'll go into that a little bit more later. There are eight auto subsets available in 22, and three insert subsets. The 1994 Topps Finest Cornerstones inserts actually draws from an insert design that happened way back in 1994. Finally, there are 39 rookie cards in the base set and all of the big rookies you would be looking for from 20, the 2022 rookie class are included. So what are the different buying formats? Well, we can start with a hobby case. There's going to be eight boxes per case, 12 packs per box, five cards per pack. That'll give you 480 total cards. And the current online price is $1,900. So that'll get you to a cost per card of $3.96. What you're guaranteed to get are 16 autos, 24 1994 finest cornerstone inserts, 16 aura of excellence inserts, and 32 refractor parallels. 
if you can't drop 1900 bucks, you can drop down to the hobby box and just get 12 packs per box, five cards per pack. That'll get you 60 total cards. They're going for about 250 bucks online right now. So your cost per card comes up to $4 and 16 cents. You do get two autos, three of the 1994 finest cornerstone inserts, two aura of excellence inserts and four refractor parallels. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing? Well, we'll start with the rookies. Our first one, Wander Franco. Then we got Jeremy Pena, Bryson Stott, O'Neill Cruz, Mackenzie Gore, Julio Rodriguez, Stephen Kwan, CJ Abrams, Seiya Suzuki, Alec Thomas, Bobby Witt Jr., Hunter Green, Spencer Torkelson, and Royce Lewis. So you can see all of the big rookies you would be looking for. I didn't even have enough room to cover off. Brandon Marsh is in there as well. So all of the big rookies that we've become accustomed to in the later sets that have been released in the 2022 card collecting season, they're all here. For our parallels, autos, and inserts, obviously the parallel rookie cards are going to be cards that people are going to be chasing. Those 1994 Finest Cornerstone inserts, you can see what that looks like over on the right with the Mookie Betts. Those have auto versions as well. Those will be sought after. There's the Finest Career Die Cut inserts and autos. A little bit of a different mix in 2022 because now it covers off on multiple careers, not just the careers of one singular player like they did with Derek Jeter and Mike Trout in years past. Then we have the finest rookie design variations, inserts, and autos, another subset that will provide more rookies from the 2022 class. Then we have the finest autos. That's the autographs that the set is has become very well known for. We have the finest moments autos, and we even have a mystery redemption auto. Not sure if there's going to be more than one. It's a big mystery. I don't know, but I do know they're available. We also have the finest original buyback autos. So those are going to be finest autos of cards that are actually buyback cards from sets in the years past. For our parallel rainbow, our base set checklist, like I said, it's one through 100. We have a fairly large rainbow. We have the refractor, which will land one in three packs, the sky blue to 300, the purple to 250, the black aqua vapor to 250, aqua, aqua shimmer. We've got blue. We've got the green speckle, green, the new color, lava green, rose gold. You can see what that looks like with the Fernando Tatis card on the right. We have the gold to 50. We have a rose gold mini diamond to 50, and we even have more. We have the orange, that new color, the red, black vapor, the red, the purple, pink vapor, and of course, a super fractor. Now for the high number short prints, that parallel rainbow squeezes down a lot. There is only a gold, a red, and a super fractor. So for our inserts, here's what we'll be looking for. In 2022 Tops Finest, we've got the 1994 Finest Cornerstones, 25 cards in that subset with a small parallel rainbow of gold, red, and a super fractor. The Aura of Excellence, you can see what that card looks like over there on the right with the Aaron Judge. That's got 20 cards in the set with the same parallel rainbow breakdown. We also have the Finest Career Die Cuts. There are going to be 10 cards in that set with the gold, red, and super fractor parallel rainbow. We also have the finest rookie design variations, 20 cards in that subset. The parallel rainbow expands a little bit to include a refractor, which will be numbered to 99. And then of course you have the gold, red, and the super fractor. For our autographs, we start with the 1994 finest cornerstone autos. There's 16 cards in the subset with an orange, red, and super fractor parallel rainbow. The Aura of Excellence Autos, 17 cards in that set with the same parallel rainbow as the Finest Cornerstone set. And then we have the Finest Autographs. That's what you're going to find in most of these boxes. An 82-card set with a large parallel rainbow of blue, green, green wave, gold, orange, orange wave, red, red wave, and a Super Fractor. There's also the Finest Career Die Cuts Autos. There's 10 cards in that subset, and they're going to be pretty tough to find because each of them are numbered to 10 only. 
And we have more autographs. There's the finest moments autographs. There's 27 cards in that subset with a gold, orange, red, and super fractor parallel rainbow. There's the finest mystery redemption autos. Not sure if there's going to be one or two cards in there. It will be numbered to 99. We have no idea who the signer is. It's a redemption. You send it in and you get surprised with who signs it coming back. Then we have the finest original buyback autos. There's 10 different signers in the set. That's the auto set where they take older Top's finest cards, buy them back, have the player sign them, stamp them as a new card, and then send them back out to you. Very cool if you can get one of those. And then we have the finest rookie design variation autos. There's 10 cards in the subset, but that parallel rainbow really expands again. So you've got your blue, green, your golds, your orange, your orange wave, super fractor, the bigger parallel rainbow. So that's all of our autographs. So fairly straightforward set. You're not going to find any relics. Going to find autos. You're going to find chromium stock along with, of course, the refractors. Going to be a popular break product. So the question becomes, who should you target in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm going to give you six teams. We'll start off with what I think the best team is. And I'm going to go with the New York Yankees. They've only got three base cards. They do have two high number short prints. They've got three inserts and 12 autos. The autos you're looking for, some big names on there. You've got Aaron Judge. Mariano Rivera has three different autos in there. Derek Jeter has an auto. Jorge Posada. And there's five different rookie card autos that feature Luis Gill and Trey Ambergy. And in my opinion, even though they're not the most expensive team you can buy, that's probably going to be the Mariners because of Julio Rodriguez. But the Yankees have so much more to offer. They've got big names. I think as you're buying into case breaks, you're going to be much more happy with the Yankees just based upon the amount of content that they have in here. If you get them in a random team break, keep them all day long unless you can make a trade for the Mariners and you really want to chase Julio. I think Julio is going to be a pretty long chase in this product, however. If you... Get them in a pick your team break. I actually was looking at prices on pick your team today. And I can tell you that the Yankees are expensive, probably the second or third most expensive team. But I think that value wise, this is going to be your best team. So if you, if you're a Yankees fan pony up for them, because I think this will be a nice set for you to collect. If you're looking for the most autos, you got to go look at the rival of the Yankees, the Boston Red Sox. Now, to be fair, the Yankees have 12 autos, but so do the Red Sox. They also have four base cards, one rookie card, one high number short print, and eight different inserts. The names you're looking for, maybe not quite as big as the Yankees, but we have some big ones on there. Raphael Devers, Jaron Duran's going to have a rookie auto in there. Dustin Pedroia has three different autos. You've got Pedro Martinez with an auto in there. Carl Yastrzemski, David Ortiz, Carlton Fisk. So tons of Hall of Famers. Some big names there for the Red Sox. The Red Sox are going surprisingly low in a pick your team break. In my opinion, this might be the best value that you can find in a pick your team break. They are substantially lower than the Yankees, but actually have more autos and inserts and content that you can find. If you get them in a random team break, keep them. This also might be a team that you could sneak a trade in for. If you've got one of the other good teams that you're maybe not chasing some of those cards, if you can trade in a random team break, the Red Sox might be a great trade target for you. Now, if you're looking for the most rookie cards, go look at the Tampa Bay Rays. Again, a very expensive team, In the top five, that's going to be because of Wander Franco, but they do have four base cards, four rookie cards, four inserts, and 10 different autos. Wander Franco has three different autos. Vidal Brujan has two different autos. Shane Baz has one in there. Josh Lowe has two autos. Austin Meadows has two autos. So lots of auto content that you can find with the Rays. Obviously, in a pick your team break, who you're going to be chasing there is going to be that Wander auto and some of the parallels there. So not a bad team. I think they're. Priced right being one of the more expensive teams because Wander Franco is a great person to chase. So if you're willing to pony up for him, you've got three different chances at the Wander. If you get him in a random team break, 
Obviously, at this point in the season, you'd know not to trade them. So just keep the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, if you're looking for a solid choice, I almost feel like I could write it in stone in 2022. But the Angels, again, another solid choice. They've been solid all year because of two different names on the team. But you've got four base cards, two rookie cards, four inserts, and seven autos for the Angels. Mike Trout has two different autos in here. Shohei Otani has an auto in here. And Brandon Marsh and Reed Detmers, who are two kind of unheralded rookies, but two people with bright futures in the MLB. Their rookie cards are in here, and you can get their autos. The Angels, because of Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, are pretty expensive in pick-your-team breaks. If you get them in a random team break, keep them or try and trade for them. Most people won't trade the Angels away because they do have the chance at a Trout or an Otani. And this is one of the rare sets where they have autos of both of them in the same set in 2022. So the Angels, a solid choice. Now, if you're looking for a couple sleepers, my first one going to be the Detroit Tigers, which is a little bit of a surprise because Spencer Torkelson is a chase. However, when you look at the pick your team prices, the Tigers are priced cheap in this. It's crazy how cheap they're priced. There's four base cards, two rookie cards, two high number short prints, four inserts, and eight autos. So they've got enough content that in a case break, you're probably doing okay. Um, Miguel Cabrera has four different autos in there. Torkelson only has one, which is why I think the price is a little bit cheaper than you might expect. Matt Manning, another good rookie out of the Tigers organization. He's got three autos. And so really, you're looking for Miguel Cabrera, Spencer Torkelson, but you can get them on the cheap. They've got a lot of content for a pick-your-team break. Also a team that would be easy to trade for in a random team break. So if you don't hit them in a random team break and you've got kind of one of those middle-tier teams, try and trade for the Tigers. I'm telling you, I don't think you're going to be disappointed, especially if one of those autos shows up in your break. Now I've got one more sleeper for you and I'm going with the Toronto Blue Jays. They've got four base cards, one high number short print, two inserts and 10 autos. I'm picking them because I like the auto lineup and because they're pretty cheap again in a pick your team break. Vlad Guerrero Jr.'s got two autos. George Springer, who I get that his autos aren't worth that much. He's got four in there. But then you've got some interesting names. Paul Molitor, Joe Carter has two different autos in there. Carlos Delgado has an auto in there. So if you're looking for some of those Hall of Famers, the Toronto Blue Jays have them. There's 10 different autos. They've got plenty of content. You can get them cheap in a pick your team break. Another team that in a random team break that you might be able to trade for. If you land them, don't be disappointed with them. The Blue Jays have not been one of the better teams in 2022, but they've got enough content here to hold their own. And I think that with Vlad Guerrero, always awesome to pull one of his autos. You've got two different Hall of Famers in there. I think they're actually underpriced and going to be undervalued in this set time after time in breaks. So those are my six teams. Let me know who you're chasing in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and that like button for me. That would be awesome. Now, if you're wondering how good all 30 teams are, well, I've got a break team cheat sheet for you. The way I work this is I separate the teams into three tiers. A top tier, which are the teams that I think are going to produce break in and break out. A middle tier, which is teams that if you're willing to pay for them, you might hit something nice you might not kind of just you know you're rolling the dice a little bit and then the bottom tier tier three which are the teams I would recommend to maybe steer clear of unless you're chasing someone for your PC so let's start with the top tier we've got the Tampa Bay Rays in there because of Wander you've got Seattle in there obviously with Julio we've covered off on New York Detroit the Angels the White Sox They don't have a ton of big name autos in there, but they do have some rookie autos and a ton of content. I've got my Blue Jays, my other sleeper team in there. We covered off on the Red Sox. The Padres, I have them up here. They don't have a lot of content, but you do have C.J. Abrams and you do have Mackenzie Gore, which are two highly, highly rated prospects that are going to make noise in 2023. 
Kansas City because of Bobby Witt. And I have the Reds in here because they have a lot of content too. Plus, you've got Hunter Green as a rookie in there. Nick Lodolo is in the set. So you've got some nice rookies you can chase there. For my second tier, not a lot of teams in the second tier. So there's Top's Finest this year kind of is a story of the haves and the have-nots. But for our second tier... We've got the Nationals in here. They've got a ton of different Juan Soto autos. So if you're looking for a Juan Soto auto, the Nationals might be someone you want to pick up on the cheap. The Pirates with O'Neill Cruz, they've got them in there. The Braves have a lot of Hall of Fame autos in here. So you may want to look at the Braves. The Twins, kind of a little bit of a sleeper here. And the Houston Astros, if you're into that team, they've got a ton of content as well. For the third tier... Surprised at how many teams are actually in here. Normally, I don't have this many teams in the bottom tier. But because of the small set size and the and the set checklist, there's just not a lot of content for the teams you see on screen. So, for example, the biggest surprise down here is probably the Dodgers. But when you look at the Dodgers, they don't have a lot of rookie cards. I think they've got like five autos in here. But outside of Walker Bueller, I mean, if you want a Max Muncy one, again, if you want to chase the Dodgers because you PC Dodgers, they're not bad in here. But for the general purpose of speaking to what are the good teams and the bad teams, I would put the Dodgers in the lower third. Texas, the Guardians, the Cubs, they just don't have a lot. Say a Suzuki's in there for the Cubs. The A's, the Giants, and the Rockies, almost non-existent. And we're waiting one more year for the Orioles to go from the bottom to the top real fast. Just wait about a month or two. So there's the break team cheat sheet. Let me know if you think I got some teams rated low, if you think I got them rated too high. But now we're going to move on to the sensational set rating. Now, here's what that is. It's the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on YouTube. What I do is I break the set down into 10 different categories, and each category is worth 1 to 10 points. Then we add up all those points, and that's what gives the set its final sensational set rating score using the scale that you see below. Then what I do is I compare the 2022 set to the scores from the past year. So 2021, 2020 to see if the set's getting better, to see if it's getting worse. And then we end it by comparing 2022 tops finest with all of the other sets that have come out so far in the 2022 card collecting season to see where it stacks up amongst all of those. So let's jump right in. 2022 Tops Finest. Here's our 10 categories. My first one is Appeal. It's been around for 30 years, and it's a chromium stock, but it is a set that some people think has lost its luster because of Tops Chrome and how they've really built out the Tops Chrome brand. However, a lot of longtime collectors like the set. They are beautiful cards. You've still got chromium stock. You've got a very straightforward, hey, two autos, and you're getting a few refractors per mini box. So I still think there's appeal there. So although I think you used to maybe rate this as like a seven, maybe even an eight, I'm going to bring it down to a 6.5. For the base checklist, again, it's the end of the season. We have a very strong base set checklist, especially with rookies. You've got a lot of big stars. It's a tight checklist with 125 cards only, and 25 of those are short prints. So a solid checklist, I give it an 8. For the auto checklist, I also give it an 8. Big names, Hall of Famers, big rookies, and not a lot of filler. There's a little bit, so we knock it a little bit, so we go ahead and give it an 8. For the inserts, the parallels, and the variations, I am going to give it an 8.5. The parallels in this set are gorgeous. I actually like the color rainbow here more than I do in Topps Chrome. I also like how the design looks this year compared to Topps Chrome. We've got some very cool inserts. It's straightforward and we also have like the rookie design variation insert. So I go ahead and give it an 8.5. For the production run and pack odds, I'm going to give it a 5. Topps Finest is a chrome set that does not get produced as much as Topps Chrome. 
it also might not hold the same value secondary wise, but you're got a decent chance of pulling something okay out of here. The production run is going to be much smaller. Think more in the line of cosmic chrome than tops chrome. So the odds are going to be better for you because the production run is going to be down. However, that being said, the production run is still way up over a few years ago. So I can't go that high. I'm going to give it a five. The card quality. These cards normally come out gorgeous and I would normally give it a nine. But uh, unfortunately, I have to knock it because I do not trust the quality control from Fanatics. People keep saying tops, but don't forget Fanatics owns tops. It's Fanatics fault, not tops. They're the owners. So I'm going to knock it and say 6.5. Keep in mind though, if these cards come out and breaks and you see that they are clean and the quality control issues have been handled for this set, this should be higher. I would give it an eight or a nine. These cards are beautiful cards. They look even better slabbed. And if there's no quality control issues or very minimal quality control issues, this should be higher. But for now, I'm going 6.5. For historical value, I'm not going to go too high. It is not worth as much as Topps Chrome. It's probably worth a little bit less than Flagship. But some of the Topps finest, especially the parallels and the autos, can hold very nice value on the secondary market. They're a great card to grade because you can normally get a pretty decent grade on them, a 9 or a 10, totally common, especially pack pulled. So you can grade your way out of one of these boxes fairly easily. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6. For our cost value, that is how much return are you getting on the box. I'm going to give it a 4.5. And here's why. Again, our production run, even though they're smaller for Topps Finest than some of the other Chromium sets, we're still pretty high. So it's good. the odds are still going to be a little bit longer than they have been in years past to pull some of the bigger names that would pay for the box for you. You do get two autos. Some of the autos should be nice. There are some filler autos in there, but most of them are pretty big names. So I think you're doing okay here. But still, at 250 a box, it's going to be hard to say, oh yeah, you can make 60 to 70% of your value easy on this box. I do think there's a little bit of value to grading these cards and trying to grade your way out of it. But that isn't an option for everyone, so I keep it in a 4.5. For artistic value, that's how nice the cards look. I'm giving it an 8.5. The cards look awesome. The design this year, I think, is better than it was in 2021. And overall, Top's Finest is just a very beautiful set. They do a great job with the inserts. They do a great job on the parallels. So I'm giving it an 8.5. Then finally, we have collectability. I go pretty high with Top's Finest because I do think that if, even if you're a nostalgia collector, this set's been around for 30 years. It's fun to collect. We have some high number short prints, which makes it a fairly easy set to collect, but hard set to complete because of the high number short prints. There's some fun autos in here. So if you like chasing hits, it's a fun product there. If you're into collecting rookies, there's a bunch of rookies in this set. So overall, I think it's a very collectible product and a product that if the price point was just a hair lower, would be a perfect product for almost every collector, maybe not investor, but collector in the hobby. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add up all of those points and find out how good 2022 Tops Finest is in 2022. So it comes out as a very good set at 69.5. Lots of things to like about Top's Finest. This would be higher if we could get production runs lower, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. In 2021, Top's Finest came in at a 67.5, so a little bit better this year because of the better rookie class. So that's kind of the difference. And back in 2020, Topps Finest came in at a 70. A lot of that because of the production run. So again, it's a very consistent set year after year. If you like Chromium stock, 
if you like grading cards, if you like chasing autos, if you like chasing rookies, and if you like parallels, all those boxes get checked for this set. Fun set to break. Also a set that doesn't give you too many cards in a box, so easy to store, which is something that more and more collectors are having problems with. So overall, Top's Finest, a very good set. Ranks pretty well on the sensational set rating. But how does it rank with all of the sets that have been released in 2022 so far? We've had a lot of them now. We're almost at the very end of the 2022 collecting season, and we've, we're really seeing how the top 10 are shaking out. And for 2022 Tops Finest, it comes in tied for 10th out of 45 different sets at 69.5. So right there with Tops Cosmic Chrome, which interestingly, I would compare these two sets side by side. If you liked Tops Cosmic Chrome, you're going to like Tops Finest. They're very similar. However, Topps Finest holds a little bit of the panache of the original Refractor. It is a much more recognized brand than Cosmic Chrome, but Cosmic Chrome was a really cool set. Bowman Draft, which I actually did not do a full set guide and review for because it was in December and I was doing holiday stuff. Bowman Draft took over Bowman Baseball with a sensational set score of 79. So that's our number one set of the year. And I don't think it's going to get unthrown. I do think that there's a couple more sets. Bowman's best is supposed to be coming out. We'll see where that lies. Bowman inception is still coming out. So we're see, we'll see what happens there. But this pretty much going to be pretty close to my top 10. The only Panini product in here is the just released National Treasures that came in at 70. So interesting that Tops kind of dominates the top. And it, for the first time in the three years that I've been doing this, Bowman came in one, two, and three. All of the Bowman products this year are pretty awesome. You can take a look at the other sets that are in the top 10. Let me know if you think I have this right. Let me know what your top 10 are. And also let me know if you're getting into Top's Finest, if you're staying away from it. For me, I think it's a really nice set this year, guys. And I do think because of that rookie class, it's going to be a set that ages well. So I'm looking forward to ripping some of it. If you're out there looking for it, I hope you can find it at your hobby shop. If you're getting into breaks, I hope you get the teams you want. I hope you hit some fire in them. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching. Hit subscribe, hit like, do all those fun things you know you're supposed to do. And most importantly, take care of your family. Take care of your friends. Take care of your neighbors. And most importantly, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.